Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gurri, and today I'm going to talk to you about quite an interesting and a basic topic, which defines a lot more about the trigger than anything else. And it gives us a much better idea about what happens to the LH levels post-trigger and post the analog trigger as well as post the HCG trigger are throwing light on very much the fundamentals of understanding nature as well as IVF. And this was done by Human Fatemi in Fertility Sterility where they wanted to evaluate the effect of the trigger and see what happens. So let's go to the basics. So the LH half-life is less than 60 minutes. HCG half-life exceeds 24 hours. The aim of the study was to assess the LH levels in early luteal phase. And what I want to see is whether LH suppression in the gonadotrophin analog triggered group was more severe than in HCG triggered group. So this was very unique. So there was four patients, a total of 16 cycles. And what was unique was that each patient had four treatments using all four different protocols. So what was the first protocol? The first protocol was that 10,000 of HCG was given with uterogestan and, and estrogen. So that is very similar to what we do in a normal IVF cycle. The second was giving GnRH analog trigger with a, a rescue, which means 1,500 of HCG on the day of ovum pickup and which is a double trigger and then continuing with the normal uterine phase support. GRH <coughs> analog uh, trigger which was with uterogestan and 4 mg of estrogen valerate and then GRH analog without any luteal phase support. And the blood sampling was done trigger plus one day and it was done USAID collection OPU plus five days and what did it show? So when you look at this graph and you look at estrogen, and estrogen was similar on a day of trigger and significantly lower on GNH analog trigger with a double trigger as well as with, a, with and without luteal phase support. Except uh, if you have a look at the HCG trigger, the two levels seem to be the highest. And when you looked at the ovum pickup plus six or five days with or without GNRH analog and both those protocols on its own without HCG showed a dramatic drop to estrogen levels. If you look at the FSH levels, now the HCG does, have, does not have any effect on FSH and the FSH levels were significantly lower with HCG trigger and that is something which you see specifically with the analog trigger. And then you look at serum LH levels, and this is quite interesting. So when you look at serum LH levels, the LH levels post one day at, uh, were almost similar with the GnRH analog trigger, and almost showed no activity in after five days. And in HCG, they showed a low level of LH. And this is very interesting. So let's have a look at even if you were to give uh, you know, the LH levels just disappear completely by day five by the time you have come to an embryo transfer. So if you're given an analog trigger, even if you're given her progesterone and estrogen, you're as good as looking at there has been absolutely no LH happening. So let's have a look at progesterone. This is very crucial. Why? Because that's what you need if you're going to transfer the embryo. So have a look at the progesterone as soon as you give HCG. So if you look at the traditional trigger, as well as when you give HCG as a double trigger, progesterone levels were high on day one and they were high corresponding to day five. And then you have a look at the analog trigger. So if you don't give any progesterone and estrogen, <coughs> the luteal phase is completely disrupted and gone. But even if you give estrogen and progesterone, and that's the fascination that your progesterone levels start to drop and they're nowhere as high as that of uh, the, uh, the HCG triggers. 
Now, the second thing which you have to understand is that when you stimulate the ovaries, and there's going to be multifollicular growth, and you have high estrogen and progesterone. So what it does, it has a negative feedback on the HPO axis, and then what it tends to inhibit the LH signals. This early luteal phase can only be covered by HCG, and the progesterone suppresses LH amplitude. So you also see it. So if you are giving a, a large number of follicles and your progesterone level starts rising, your LH amplitude also starts decreasing. And you can understand that even in the natural cycles. And that's something to be understood. And as soon as there is a suppression of LH amplitude, LH levels start dropping. So what happens in a natural cycle? In a natural cycle, you have an ascending arm and a, and a plateau and a descending arm, and this tends to uh, last for about 48 hours. As soon as you give the analog trigger, the ascending arm is cut short from 14 hours to 4 hours. So it's a rapid rise. And what we know, even from Kispeptin trials, is that for USAD maturation, a short LH surge is adequate, but a longer LH surge is required for prolonging the luteal phase to normal. Now, I have a simple way of putting this, and I, I, I say, well, divide the luteal phase into two halves. The first half is LH dependent, and the second half is HCG dependent. And why do I say that? Because the first half is completely in the dominance of LH. And if your luteal phase, if you start spotting very, very early in the luteal phase, just try to focus on that LH deficiency, which would mean it would either be a HPO axis deficiency or it could be a corpus luteal deficiency. And a corpus luteal deficiency could be triggered by poor oocyte quality, one, or could be triggered also by having a lack of LH stimulation. And what makes the second half? The second half is stimulation and survival of the corpus luteum. And what makes the corpus luteum survive? It's ongoing HCG. So think about it again. And if you want to correct luteal phase defect, then you have to look at prolonging the life of the corpus luteum. And that is the basis. So if you understand the luteal phase in HCG, the results are in low luteal phase FSH and LH results are low. There's a negative feedback, which is caused by LH-like activity. So HCG gives LH-like activity induced by a bolus of HCG. And this negative feedback mechanism is seen even on day five. The HCG covers for LH deficiency. So in fact, when you give it a little bit of HCG, you can literally cover the LH deficiency because HCG has a much longer half-life. But you have to remember that if you want to rescue the luteal phase, there's only one thing that rescues the luteal phase, and that's HCG. The risk is that you will run the risk of severe over hyperstimulation in some cases. And somewhere you have to decide, is it much better to freeze these embryos? But what this paper is teaching us is teaching us that the analog trigger causes significant disruption of the corpus luteum and the corpus and causes luteal lysis to a large extent. And it also, after five days, you're seeing estrogen, progesterone, and LH levels literally dropping down. And if you want to, the only way you can make this recover and have a slightly better chance of success is by adding a bit amount of HCG, bearing in mind that there's a risk of severe hyperstimulation. Thank you.